this is Professor Hui. Today we're going to explain what an electric field is, and also we're going to explain the unit volt. On my right hand side, you see a plasma ball. The center of the plasma ball is the positive electrode, whereby you will see that it is charged at about 5 kilovolt electric potential relative to the outside, which is the glass ball. So what you see is that given the electric field voltage difference of 5 kilovolt, and the distance between the center electrode and the glass ball being about 5 centimeter, you have an electric field that is measured in terms of intensity of 5 kilovolt divided by 0 0.05 meter, which gives you an electric field intensity of 100 kilovolt per meter. So what we have is a measurement of electric field strength in the unit of volt per meter. What you see here is that given the very big voltage potential between the electrode and the sphere, the gas inside, which is argon and also neon, will break down into a plasma, which become conducting, and therefore the electron would go following the filament that you see, and you can show it, the filament. If you can zoom in further, all the way down, that this filament seems to emanate from the positive electrode and end onto the glass sphere. It is an electric current that is falling through the, plas uh, the plasma filament to have an electric current flowing back and forth between the electrode and the glass sphere. Now I'm going to show also a very interesting phenomenon. Basically, if I touch the glass sphere, you see the filament collapses and I can start to feel the heat on my finger that most of the current now is flowing between the electrode and my finger, which you can see. And it basically, largely because my hand has a higher capacitance compared to the glass sphere, and therefore all the currents are flowing between the positive electrode and my finger. The light filament of a plasma ball is very similar to lightning strike in a thunderstorm. During a thunderstorm, what you have is the lightning comes from the cloud that has a voltage of more than 10 million volt compared with the ground. And therefore, electricity is conducted from the cloud to the ground. I'm going to show you a video clip of a very familiar, from a very familiar movie, Back to the Future. So what you see is described by the dog that you can get 1.21 gigawatt from a lightning strike. Actually, you can get a lot more than that. You can get 1 terawatt for a very brief time of about 30 milliseconds. Well, the movie talks about that you can get 1.21 gigawatt in a lightning strike. In fact, you can get a lot more than 1.21 gigawatt. You can get actually 1 terawatt, which is 10 to the 12 watt of power from a lightning strike. But you can only get it within 30 milliseconds of time. And therefore, later we're going to calculate the amount of energy that is delivered, as well as the current that is flow through a lightning strike. But before that, Let's learn a little bit about electric field. What is an electric field is basically that you have a voltage difference of V between, say, the cloud and the ground. If given that you have a voltage of 10 times 10 to the 6 volt, and let's just assume that the distance of the lightning strike is one kilometer or 1,000 meter. What you have then is an electric field 
And electric field is defined as the voltage divided by the distance. In this case here, what you have is that 10 to the 7 volt divided by 10 to the 3 meter, you get a, an electric field intensity of 10 to the 4 volt per meter. So that's roughly about the same amount that we were talking about in the plasma ball. Now, electric fields are very similar to gravitational field. When we talk about gravitational field, we talk about F, the force, or the mass M would produce an acceleration of A, and this is expressed in terms of Newton, and this is in terms of kilogram, and acceleration is in terms of meter per second square. We talk about electric charges. Last time we say the force between two charges is equal to K times Q1, Q2, divided by the distance R squared. Now the electric field, the force that a charge Q1 experience would be equal to Q1 times E, where the electric field intensity is provided by the other charge of uh, Q2. So in essence, you can claim that an, a charge of Q2 located at a single point in space will provide an E field that is equal to K times Q2 divided by D squared. So that's the electric field intensity that is offered by point charge of Q2 coulombs. So that defines the E field in terms of electric charges. Now, what I want to explain is basically that the work that is done by a, a charge of, say, Q, moving through a voltage V is equal to W, the work being done. Basically, if you move a charge Q through an electric field of voltage difference of V, then the amount of work that would be done would be equal to W expressed in terms of joules. All right, so if you find out right from this formula that basically, we are going to show later that basically power is equal to the amount of work divided by the time during the work is done. So what you have is a power is equal to Q, W, uh, equal to work divided by time, and that's equal, uh, we express this in terms of power, that's equal to QV divided by T, and that's equal to Q divided by T is equal to current, and therefore you have power P equal to I times V. We're going to do an exercise to calculate what happened to the person during a lightning strike. We have given to you that a lightning strike can convey a power of 1 terawatt, 10 to the 12 watt in 30 milliseconds. And the distance, the current flow through is about 1,000 meter. So the exercise is, one, what's the electric field strength? And the answer has been given by E equal to V divided by D equal to 10 to the 7 volt divided by 10 to the 3rd meter, therefore, is about 10,000 volt per meter. The second question I'm going to ask is, the, how much energy is delivered by that lightning strike? And for that matter, what you have is that the energy is given by power times the amount of time that power is flowing through to the Earth. So what you have here is that basically you have 10 to the 12 watt times 30 times 10 to the 3 second, and therefore that's roughly equal to 30 gigajoules, which is a huge amount of power. Now bear in mind, a terawatt is roughly what the United States would consume in terms of power during the peak afternoon time. 
So a lightning strike can provide the entire United States with electricity, but only for 30 milliseconds. The third thing we're going to calculate is the current that is delivered through a lightning bolt to the person. And how do we calculate that? Well, we know that the power is current P, the power that is delivered is equal to the current times the voltage, as we derived earlier. And given that the power is 10 to the 12 watt, and we know the voltage is 10 to the 7 volt, and therefore the current I would be equal to 10 to the 12 watt divided by 10 to the 7 volt, and therefore the current in this case here is equal to 10 to the 5th ampere, or roughly equal to 100,000 ampere, which is a very large amount of electricity. And that's sufficient, more than sufficient to kill you because when you are electrocuted by electricity, it's the current that kills you. The fourth question we want to ask is then, what is the amount of charge that is deposited on the person, through the person to the ground? And for that, what you have is that you can basically Q is equal to the current times the time that is delivered. And therefore, if you have 100,000 ampere and you have a time of 30 millisecond, what you have is that you would, that is roughly equal to about 3,000 coulomb, which is a large amount of uh, electric charges.